All right. Are we live? I hope not. I think we're live. We're Howdy, live. folks. This is Andy Tran <laughs> from Interbark Outdoors, live from SHOT Show 2016. I am here with John from the Wingman 115 channel, not a stranger to most of you. And we also have Dan Eastland. It's the first time you've been. I am. I am a stranger to most of you. Stranger? I am. Like when you sit on your hand? Yes. Okay. There's none. You want to introduce yourself, what you do at Dogwood Custom Knives? I do. I'm Dan Eastland with Dogwood Custom Knives. I'm a custom knife maker. Uh, although I am now also Dan Eastland with Heritage Knives, our new production line. Awesome. Cool. So what, what sets you apart a little bit from, from most custom knife makers? Well, I mean, other than my stunning good looks. And your boy school charm. <laughs> um, I've been full-time for about five years. Uh, one of the biggest differences is some of my blade philosophy. A big fan of high thin grinds. I like the efficiency. Um, other than that, I'd like to say something really deep, but there's a, a lot of good knife makers out there. There are a lot of good knife makers, but I kind of appeal to yours a little bit more than most because they work. They work well. They're functional. Well, and uh, as you saw when we were down in the jungle, uh, I do a lot of field testing with my blades. Uh, you know, it sometimes takes me a year to bring a new pattern out. Because until it's been used in real-world situations for extended periods, I'm just not ready to put my name on it. Uh, it's one of the reasons uh, I like the powdered steels, because they will just take abuse. Uh, they hold a fine edge. Mm -hmm. um, I've also done some, uh, as you know, I get a little crazy with my handle materials. So, uh, I'm going to put a little light on that. Yeah, we can smack it. Yeah, that's my glow-in-the-dark firefly material. Yeah. And when you see that live, I mean, it is deep. It looks really cool. So it's kind of hard to tell on camera, but, right? Yeah, however cool you think it is, it is actually cooler than that in real life. Yeah. Well, what I like about it is that it's not just a surface. It, it's in deep in the material. It is. It's, it's truly three-dimensional, and it's a way for me to get uh, the glow-in-the-dark material. If it's a solid material, then only the material on the very surface uh, reacts with the light. By making it three-dimensional like this, I actually get more surface area that glows, so it's a brighter glow for longer. Okay. Uh, 30 minutes of direct sunlight will give you about eight hours of glow with this, and it only takes three or four seconds to charge it enough so it'll show up uh, against a dark background. So at night, if you know the knife is in this general area, but you can't see it, you can shine a light over there for a few seconds, then turn it off and it'll glow enough that you can see it against the background. Awesome. And uh, this pattern is the Piranha, which uh, I, I think you're kind of partial to. Yeah, and you actually gave me a, uh, a Piranha of my own. I did. Not with the glow handle, no. but with some wood that we harvested down in the Amazon. Uh, when, uh, when we made those flat bows from uh, Black Palm, uh, I, I got a little overzealous with mine and broke it. So <laughs> I did that too, only back at home. On yeah, camera. yeah, on and, camera. and I, I wasn't quite as skilled at you uh, as replacing it, so I just repurposed it. Yeah, so this is the knife. It's made out of black palm, at least the handle is. Uh, the blade is CPM one fifty four, correct? Which is not uh, same composition as one fifty four CM, but the powdered steel instead. Yeah. It's a powdered steel, so it's got a, a much finer grain, and it's more consistent throughout the steel. So you get a better edge retention yeah, and, and you, much tougher. You took the ground a little bit higher than you typically would on a normal prong, right? I do. Uh, well, actually, that's um, that's a 20-degree grind, so it's just barely a, a scandy. Because a, a knife edge is a double inclined plane. The higher, the higher the grind goes up, the lower the angle, so the more efficiently it'll cut. And again, that's why I like to, to really push my grind as high as I can so that they'll will be as efficient a blade as possible. And your custom knives are offering some pretty cool leather options as well. They do. Uh, I've teamed up with Reliance Leatherwork. Uh, we've now got them in-house. And as you can see, they tooled the uh, Innerbark's logo on, the, on your sheath. It's pretty hot. And that's a sheath. They actually invented that sheath for me to take down to the jungle. And what I like about it is it's a dangler. So when we were wearing our packs, it rode below my kidney belt. But with just two snaps, you can take it off, 
the D-ring slips out of the way, and then you can carry it as a traditional style. Or you can run the belt through this second space, and it'll cant at an angle, and you can carry it as a scout style. So it's, you know, it's genuinely three sheets in one. Very cool. And for more of a production knife, you guys have the Heritage line now. Yeah, or this the Heritage company. Uh, yeah, we've. Uh, you know, it's all. They're all made in the same in the same shop. Uh, but this is a, a, a semi-production knife, so I have the the blades. They're outsourced. Uh, this batch is actually from LT White, or right? Excuse me. He is white. Yeah, he is <laughs> and tall. <laughs> uh, so I have the handles CNC'd. Uh, he made this batch of blades for me. They come in the shop. We put them together. Quality control them. And uh, this is the Heritage line. It is based on the Echo Five from Dogwood. One of your more popular patterns? Uh, it is. It's uh, it's been out on the market for about four years now, and it's my best seller. Uh, and it is uh, the Echo Five. You see here, it's got an asymmetrical spear tip, and it's got a very pronounced edge on the back. For the Echo Seven, we went with a drop tip, which gives you a little finer tip. Uh, for drilling work and that sort of thing and then we rounded this this butt off a little bit and it's got the exposed lanyard hole and I do that so when you put a lanyard in it and you're holding it the lanyard doesn't interfere with your grip it'll lay down below the surface of the handle mm -hmm. and I found it I could get a better grip and then uh, threaded fasteners uh, we've got other handle options coming out so you can switch out handles uh, we'll make uh, liners so you can shim a handle Make it a little thicker, a little thinner to fit your hand. Uh, and they come with uh, the leather sheath from uh, Reliance Leatherwork as well. I gotta say, at that, uh, it's 156 MSRP. And at that price point, you're not gonna find a sheath like this. I mean, they really knocked it out of Yeah, when you see it up close and personal, that is a very high quality sheath. Yeah. It comes with a great looking blade. Yeah, and the guys there just do an amazing job. Mm -hmm. I work with uh, Dylan over at um, Shade Tree Phenolics, and uh, I sent him some of the some of the glow technology, and we came up with this. It's a starry night. Uh, as the glow dies down, you'll be able to see the the swirly micarta pattern. And this is a random twist micarta with the glow in the dark stones. Uh, looks a lot like the uh, just drew a blank on the artist's name. Van Gogh. Thank you. Uh, the Van Gogh painting. That's the name. Uh, and oddly enough, a piranha as well. Uh, and so, what what's the price range for a piranha? I have I have a few people asking and very interested about about these knives. Um, base price is mid two hundreds, uh, depending on the steel and the handle material. Uh, you can go you know, three fifty with a sheath. Um, and again, since it's custom, you've got a lot of options. You can choose some different steels, some different handle materials. And make it a one of a kind that no one will have, or you can make it a more economic working knife. Okay. And I work in pretty much any steel you want. Uh, as you know, I drink the Kool Aid on the powdered steels. I love them. Uh, all my heat treat is done in shop, though, so any steel somebody wants, I can work with it. And what's the general wait time? Because typically for custom knives, I mean, they're not run in batches of 300 or anything like that. They're not. Uh, it had gotten out of hand for a while. I was at about. Uh, I was about an eight month work uh, wait time. And I've managed to work that down. And what we started doing now is the first of every month, we take about 10 or 15 orders. I finish those out and then the first of the, each month, you know, we take the first 10 or 15 orders that come in. And part of the reason is I just moved into a new shop. I moved down to South Carolina. So there's a lot of lag time on training shop help. Uh, sometimes it takes me six months to get an apprentice to where they can do work that I'm comfortable with them working on. So it's helping manage the, the flow a little bit until I get some help in the shop, and then we'll, we'll open the doors up. Uh, I also sell uh, spec knives. So not every knife I make is a, a custom order, uh, partially because there's knives I just really want to make, and I don't want to have to wait eight months before I can make a knife that I wanted to make. So every couple of weeks on the, the Dogwood Facebook page, uh, we'll post uh, spec knives for sale. And it's a chance that if you don't want to wait or you didn't win the lottery at the first of the month to get a dogwood. Awesome. And what's your Facebook page in case people don't wonder? Uh, it's Dogwood Custom Knives. Okay. Uh, and then there's also the website at dogwoodcustomknives.com.
Cool. And I will probably link that in the description for folks to go check it out later. I love my knife. Thank you. Thank oh, you very they're much. They're great looking blades. And from a blade reviewer and a blade aficionado and a big fan, I mean, this guy knows his stuff about steel. We sat and we talked Monday night yeah, for hours, I mean, about steel. I learned stuff that I didn't even know existed. It's just amazing, uh, the knowledge that this guy has. I, I, I had a really good background coming into knife making. I was, I'd been an uh, engineering student uh, when my first son was born, and he was sickly. Somebody needed to stay at home. So I dropped out of the engineering program, and it had started building furniture. So I spent, I've got an engineering background, and I spent 10 years building custom furniture. So when I started making knives, I already had the, the background to understand the concepts of uh, the joinery involved in making multi-layered handles. And I had, a back, or I had a base to start researching why does a knife blade work? You know, what angles make it more efficient? Yeah. Uh, what steels work in what way? Because the, a great steel in the wrong application, it, it can make a knife that's just not worthy where if you pet match the application and the steel, that's when you get a really efficient tool. Awesome. So you're pretty new to the industry. This is your first time at SHOT Show? It is. It's uh, What do you think? You know, I thought I was ready for the big time. Um, it was, it's pretty humbling. I, mean, I heard somebody talking about that an average size city might be 70,000 people. And today they had more than 70,000 people on the floor at SHOT Show today. I believe that. How many times do you reckon you got hit by a lower bike? Uh, judging by the, the bruises on my shin, at least 10. And that doesn't count the number of times that I stumbled over somebody. Wonderful. Yeah, there should be hit and run policy rules with those really hard things. Because it gets a little crazy. Next year, I'm going to bring about five or six little red wagons and link them together. So that just make a long train. The radio flyers. That's yes, the nice. radio flyer. Tactical radio flyers. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, flat, uh, flat OD green, and uh, you know. we'll put a gun mount on it. And you can sit back there and go pew pew <laughs> pew. <laughs> I borrow the, the Dylan Arrow uh, mini gun down there, and yeah. tell you what, you take the mini guns, I'll take the mini gun drills. Okay, deal. Sorry, so, darling. So this is a shot <laughs> show where, and this is Andy and I's second trip. Unfortunately, he wasn't with me last year. We were like ships in the night. No, your second trip is my third trip. Mm -hmm. Is that your third trip? Yeah. First year I went alone, my bad. second year out with Glenn, my, my good, good friend from film school. And so I had a year hiatus, you know. So I'm staying correct. So yet again, Andy is our security. He is. And this has been a pretty fun shot again. show for me. <laughs> I think other than the shot show app, which I'm going to go out on the limb here and say that it sucked really bad. I'd say I had a, I had a different experience. Did you? I did. I didn't know. Uh, I was a little frustrated because I couldn't get the you are here marker and the where I want to go marker on the map at the same time. But there was a couple of times when I was looking around, I'm like, I can't find the booth. And I used the you are here app and I go, oh, I'm on the third floor and that's on the first floor. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was a little confusing to say the least. But Monday, not Monday, I don't have my days speed up because we have sleep deprivation. We're trying to shoot vi shoot videos all day and he's working at the tops booth for an hour and a half a day uh, and then we're staying up late doing video editing and all that I've, stuff i don't think i've seen the sun in two days because it's dark when we go in yeah and we don't come back out until after sunset and that's not a bad thing i mean we're not whining about that we're trying to put out content for you guys no i'm whining <laughs> and, we're, <laughs> and we're having fun doing it but like last night we were up till two in the morning trying to get videos out my computer froze and it's not cooperative, so I didn't even get any videos out that day. Yeah, he was, he was having a lot of time. That explains the angry monkey sounds in the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it was a little crazy here for a little while. But Tuesday, uh, when you try to describe SHOT Show to folks in your first experience, you really can't describe it in detail to somebody. You can say that it's controlled chaos or a hummingbird on steroids or all that good stuff, but until you see that person's face for the first time, when we start walking in, and you see the first ballroom with booths, then it sinks in that 
Oh my God. So we were walking around the first ballroom and uh, I, you know, I, I got my head wrapped around it. I'm in a little bit of shock. It's, it's the biggest room I've been in, especially with that many different vendors. Yeah. And, but I'm, I'm handling it. I got myself under control. And then Andy looks at me and goes, so do you want to go to the big room now? <laughs> <laughs> I do remember that. And you're like, what? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, because, you know, the, the 30 foot high ceilings, you haven't seen the one where it's like 100 feet tall. Yeah. yeah. And that's where all the big boys, the, the Glocks, the Six Hours, the Remingtons. I had to take a minute, lean against the wall, breathe into a bag. <laughs> Like on an airplane with the oxygen comes <laughs> down. I need some smelling salts for you. Just like crack one of those vials and put them in your nose. Uh, let's see. Somebody said a uh, modern day musket. Go, sup, guys. What was the coolest thing at shot? You first. You know, this is your first time. The coolest thing is hard to. It's like picking which, which one of my kids is my favorite. You know who you are. My favorite thing, it may not be the coolest thing, but my favorite thing so far has been that mule pack from uh, uh, Sandpiper of California. Yeah. Because as we had talked about, I've got a, I got a jacked up back and the, like the internal frame I took to the jungle, it never rode right because uh, the shoulder straps, I couldn't adjust them independently. Yeah, it goes up and down for both. Yeah, well, yeah, so both move up, and I needed one slightly higher than the other. And this pack, it's a low-profile frame, so it shouldn't hang up too badly. And the lumbar support floats inside of it, so it's a, an external frame, but you get a lot of motion out of it. So, And quite possibly the coolest thing is the lumbar support folds out into a camp chair. Yeah. And it's right. actually super comfortable because I got that foam in there, yeah. and then it's curved. And I don't know how it fit for you, but for me, it seemed to fit out of It was a little hard getting up because it was one of those deep sitting chairs. Yeah. Well, or maybe it was because I've been more rocker. It might have been that I've been walking for two days. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I liked it enough that I'm going to order one, uh, do a little field testing. And if it works as well as I think it does, I think it's going to go to the jungle with me this year. So, two. How about you, man? For me, it, it wasn't more of the stuff because there's. There's always stuff, right? For me, it was the human element of SHOT Show. It was fun for me this year because last year I got to meet a lot of YouTubers and people in the industry. And this year it was like almost a family reunion of where we're meeting folks and, uh, you know, I'm meeting star, reality stars, but I'm more impressed with the YouTube stars because we were all like alumni people who over the years have grown our channels together and you know we got to talk to Cameron from Twang and Bang I mean awesome super guy everyday tactical videos Brian from survival on purpose angry jackalope I mean I, I know I'm gonna offend people by not being able to remember everybody but truly everybody was just super cool we're all talking sharing information talking about cool stuff hey go check this out talk to this person go check this thing out and it was truly, uh, I want to say, like a brother and sisterhood that everybody just treated everybody cool and you're just having a blast. Yeah. So you can have Jack up there. He has Okay. You know where? What's up, guys? Hey. Hello. You know the two most polite places in all of the world? It's knife shows and gun shows. Oh, I thought you, know you were going to say the AVN Awards uh, right across the street. Uh, I, I, I do not know what you're speaking <laughs> of. I, 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 I got to go now. <laughs> No, no, you're right. You're right. Because it's just down home folks. And it was fun on the, the point you were making. Uh, there are a couple of people. Is that a okay. bomb? Oh, that's why. I, see, I'm working while I we're doing this. Have my, to jump on that thing. My camera's <laughs> downloading video so I can upload video for you guys. Yeah, I'll show Andy. Yeah, please don't. <laughs> I need that camera for tomorrow. <laughs> I was impressed. The, you know, I've worked Blade Show for about four years now with the booth. Um, and I was, it was kind of flattering that every so often someone would walk up to me and go, Dan, what are you doing here? Yeah. Um, and it, but it was that family, that family yeah. feeling. Even the booth vendors, I mean, people were just courteous and nice. Should I, should I drink this off again? <laughs> no, you're fine. No, it's not alcohol. No, it's Bacardi 151. You're all right. Yeah. It's basically water. Yeah. What about you? 
I want to hear from you. You're the host of this channel. Yeah. Tell your audience out there. Hi. Uh, we're going to disregard them. Oh, what can you tell them about the, the, the tweet? Yeah. Oh, no, we can't <laughs> tell them about the story. Oh, okay. Tell about the knife. Okay. Uh, yeah, we got to talk about it. My favorite thing I think that I saw was today. We went to the crossing booth and we saw the air, was it the airboat? Uh, airboat, yeah. Airboat. Yeah. They didn't take me. They knew I would drool too much over all the stuff. Well, well they only had two and we weren't going to share. It's essentially a uh, 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 piece. Not PC. essentially, it's literally. It's literally, pneumatic. It's a PCP, because I don't like saying PCP, because in Pre-charged pneumatic. It's a naked guy that can, like, flip We're not on PCP. It's uh, as strong it's, as a man on PCP, though. Yes. It could be. It is a pre-charged pneumatic air gun that shoots arrows instead of little tiny projectiles. Is it still technically an arrow? Because with a crossbow, it's a bolt. Oh, uh, I guess it would be a bolt. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I like bow fishing. And I like shooting guns, so it could potentially be shooting fish and with air guns that shoot air and bolts. Yeah. yeah, and I think it would be super cool. And, and it's a super cool, cool idea. Yeah. It's yeah, 450 feet per second with a what 300 grain shaft and a 100 grain. Uh, I think it. I thought it was, I think no, the total weight ass. was 325. 325. Crossman did a good job. I I saw some prototype photos of it early on. Well, and it's got a lot I mean, of. The, if it does what they say it's going to do, it's going to be a badass. Thing. It's got a lot of the perks of a crossbow. Uh, it's quiet. It's launching a bolt, but you don't have limbs out on either side. Yeah. It's so functional. You don't get catastrophic failure from a limb. You don't get a limb hanging up on underbrush. When you're in a deer stand or a game stand, you talk about hunting. Right? That's okay. I don't know if you're a pedo approved. <laughs> pedo people eating tasty animals. That's yes. <laughs> Uh, it's it'll be easy to maneuver, and it yeah it's four four hundred twenty five feet per second with a uh, four fifty or something four fifty fifty stitches is asking will it come with fishing line people I'm sorry I don't have my old people reading glasses uh, not yet but it does come with what twelve twelve volts uh, I think six right now and then if you buy well six normally and if you buy with the shot show special it comes with six free bolts which is like a hundred dollar value. Um, and, and it has to it's a special type of bolt because they're hollow in order to fit on the tube and it's very precision fit. And if you and order now, you get a free coffee mug. Yes. And it's uh, it's got a, a special uh, I wouldn't say O ring on the back. Yeah. So that when it seats, it seats nice and tight. But I imagine it won't be long before they somebody comes out with a kit to modify it. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think it's coming out in April, stuff. is that what they said? They got a lot of pre orders that's coming out in April. And as far as the bow fishing kit goes, and if there's anybody to product test, it's me. Oh. <laughs> so I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say it, but I'm going to say it. Andy's got a new knife. We need help coming up with a name for this knife. No, we don't. We have a name. Well, we're, we need help. We're we just, just, <laughs> no, we do need help. We yes. need professional help. Yeah, yes. it's uh, my new design. It's going to be made by Tops Knives USA. It is a dagger. But we want to have a civilian version that's Correct. Yeah. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's cool because it has a nice stout tip. It has a high grind on the main cutting edge. So it's stout and savvy, but it's also very sharp and slicey. Yeah, it's efficient. Yeah. And it has a ring on it, so it's easy to grab. Uh, the, the reason why I designed it is a lot of people wanted a small TFK to carry on their belt or get a little bearing vest ring like that. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. But uh, I didn't want that because shrinking down the TFK would ruin its effectiveness, in my opinion, yeah. without changing a whole lot of things about it, like blade thickness and yada yada. Things that make it work is a big knife. Like yeah. repainting well, the Picasso. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Well, Picasso did do that with that one horse. You no, no, no. Uh, man with a guitar. He did repaint over it. But he did yeah. And he took all the pictures. That's cool. Yes, he did. Yeah, all the hockey were taken. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, so I decided to design a blade from the ground up because uh, I think it deserved it. A lot of law enforcement brothers and sisters and military people were, you know, asking for it. So I hooked up with Tops Knives and came up with this. And I like that. Uh, I like the ground that you chose. Yeah, take a look. There's videos. You can see some close-up stuff with uh, 
John's channel. On my channel, we did like a little booth review where we showed up close. And you know what else I like about it? The thickness. Yes. It is not 3 sixteenths of an inch. I originally wanted that. And then uh, once I got it in my hands, it was way too heavy. And I wouldn't want to carry on my duty belt or attached to my ballistic vest. So I asked for one eighth and spent for and right now it's 1095 just as a prototype, but we're, uh, we're seriously considering 154 CM, which will make it stainless steel. The great thing about that is if we're in a, a wet environment like Seattle, it's not going to rust. And also if you're in a really hot, dry environment like Texas, uh, the sweat's not going to be anything. So. And uh, 154 CM is that uh, It's got some excellent edge holding. Uh, people are really uh, familiar with, ooh, that's kind of intimidating. Well, hey, you said I couldn't say that. <laughs> you can't say that. I can say. Oh, that's right. Do as you do as you say, not as you do. So, any other dish the dirt sort of stuff at a shot show? You think the folks out there would like to hear that? Maybe we didn't catch on video. Little tidbits, little things we saw. Mm. I saw Steven Seagal today. I said hi. Did he chop anyone in the neck on the? He way? went. Sup? Kept walking. So, I said. Okay, Mr. Seagal, have a nice day. You know, I was walking behind you, and I actually heard a giggle. <laughs> he looks like a gremlin. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're having fun. I'm here. Also, my daughter's here with me, my son-in-law, Charlie. We're just having a blast, you know. I'm spending the week with my family, with good friends. You can't ask for any more. making videos. Hopefully, they're entertaining and fun to watch, and uh, we get to put out some quality product for you guys. Yeah, and just because we didn't do a video on a certain product doesn't mean it won't show up on the channel. Correct. Because yeah. yeah. we have a ton of videos in the can that, I mean, there's only 24 hours in the day, and we, there's no way we can process that much video or any video shoot without big, big box teams, uh, not construction teams, but just backup teams to be able to do this stuff. So, so I, I'm, I'm not a sufficient enough backup team. Yeah, I would agree. <laughs> I mean, I'll try this time. No, we're just having fun. We've just been goofing off all week long. Maybe yeah. a little more than show. Yeah, but responsibly. It's, it's shot show. I mean, we're just having a great time. It's Vegas. Yeah. Um, do uh, you put up a video on uh, that blue force gear? Uh, that's going up right now. Is it? I just got it live. I was impressed. Yeah, uh, I've got to check with whatever agency and going to be with. See if I think I get all this in force gear. Now I'm, I'm going to date myself here, but uh, compared to the, the old TA50 that we used to carry, you mean the haversacks and the yeah, <laughs> yeah, with the wooden frame. <laughs> and they used to see Johnny comes by chin hole. Yeah, we're still not laughing about that. The carpet yeah. on it at the AVN Awards is bald. Who? Someone asked what the color uh, of the carpet was at the AVN. It was a oh, bald carpet. <laughs> um, what's the name? <laughs> never, never heard of her. <laughs> now I know that the angry jackalope has been trying to get his hands on one of these. I can't even name the blade. The, I'll call it the no, prototype. No, 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 can't the prototype. I thought he was going to get it today. I thought he was Andy joking. Was in that booth. He Andy was, was doing good. Weak. I was ready to start doing auctioneer. Hey, 25 under 25 dead and 25. So, hey, you know, if we can put an orange gun in his bag, we can get that knife out. Yes. Wow. Been passing so, this. okay. I'm going to tell you guys a funny story. I don't know how it began. <laughs> neither, neither do I. Somebody put some stick, uh, some Trigicon stick, uh, patch, Velcro on, patch on yeah, glow in the dark. one of our pieces of freaking gear that's all Velcroed out, you tacticaled out. So, we've been uh, playing it went this. on my gear. No, I okay. won't. I don't know. Mine. I don't oh, we still got tomorrow. I'm great, man. We still have tomorrow. So the game was is that you have to attach that patch. And then it started to, to, to two patches. And then it got scary. Yeah, and then you got scary. Time. Well, and then you got extra points whether or not you could get it on their badge holder on the front or if you just went on the back. Or the back. So we had to be just total stealth mode, ninja style. And everybody's getting each other. They're waiting. I'm doing videos and I'm interviewing folks or I'm holding the camera. And people are coming up and tagging me and stuff, and I'm like, oh, okay. you know, I'm trying to maintain thought. So, uh, you didn't try to save the patch. Yeah, no kidding. Luckily, I passed off 
the patch to uh, Mike from VanQuest this morning as he's walking in. Hey, Mike, yeah, how are you? Doing? I just tag him on the back, right? You'll kick me. <laughs> so he's carrying that patch all day, which I had to go back and do a uh, VanQuest booth review. And he's talking to my daughter, and he's like, somebody put this on my pack earlier this morning. I don't know who the heck would do that. And I was like, oh, I don't know anybody would do that. Uh, so my daughter, we're all out of patches, right? And we're going, okay, well, I guess it's game over. And uh, somebody gave my daughter, uh, where's that? Plastic. Uh, gun. Not a plastic, but it's like a foam 1911-looking-ish gun or something. It, it, you know, and, my, <laughs> and my daughter, you know. She just grabs it and takes it, and I was like, what the hell would you take that for? And then it just sparked. I go, oh, the mission now is we got to get this into somebody's bag. So we were at the Tops booth, and we're like, hey, we're going to get this guy over here. And how do we get him, right? Because he's walking around with all this stuff. So we had to go a little Jason Bourne. But we got this in his bag. So he gets It back. was off my body. And just stuff. Yes, it was. So we got back to the hotel room. And I catch up with Andy, and Andy's like, who the hell put this in my bag? Yeah, I found it at lunch, because I was like putting something in my bag, and I was like, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> Just for the record, when I fly out of here tomorrow, neither I nor the TSA Ooh. will find that of you. Yes, <laughs> yes. So uh, if Dan's wife's watching this right now, he may be delayed a little bit if he has this in his pack. Mm. That's, that's an awesome idea. So that's the little game. Maybe, my mouth shut. maybe <laughs> next year we can up the ante with, we'll call it the Jason Bourne syndrome or something, trying to put an object in somebody's pack. But uh, we were a little naughty this morning. Yeah. Because uh, we were talking to Cameron breakfast. from Twang and Bang, and he went to go do an interview. Oh, yeah. And we were like, hey, we got to get rid of one, one of these patches because we're tired of getting tagged, right? You know? And uh, I said, yeah, hey, put, that in, put that in Cameron's bag. So, uh, and he picked up one of the little side panels because he had no Velcro on his pack at all. So we're yeah, like, how the hell do we tag this on him? So he had a little side pocket and he picked up his, uh, the Velcro on the side pocket and slipped it in. So I said, well, we better leave a little calling card. So we put our business cards in there with him so he knew that, you know, not some just crazy person got in his backpack. Uh, well, you, want to, you want to restate that? <laughs> not some unknown crazy person. No, yeah, unknown mentally unstable right. So, so y'all are just banking on him having a good sense of humor, then. I yeah. hope so. <laughs> so that's the that's the game right now between all of us, our little our crew that's here that we're playing like that. Well, on shot show bingo, yeah. Which uh, I would like to go ahead and say I'm ahead with uh, Fedora on backwards. <laughs> he is. So at shot show, they give you this bingo card. And you have to check off if you see it's all sorts of weird stuff like uh, uh, a guy with 511 pants like size 80 or something. You know, and I'm just exaggerating, but you know that sort of stuff. And then you check that off the list, and you know it's just some little fun thing. The only one I've got left is I haven't found an AR platform yet. Mm. You're right because I did find the bottle of unicorn tears. <laughs> it was right near the Syracoat booth. I know that. Had it in little jars, little vials. Uh, <laughs> it, that's what I'm saying. This week has just been fun. It's been campy. We've had a great time. We busted our rump, you know, doing a lot of business as far as uh, getting videos out, meeting people. But it's been a great time. At least for me. I am having fun. Yeah. Andy is a robot. <laughs> so tired. You know, y'all seem so relaxed over there, cuddled up together. Big spoon, little spoon. Hey, here we go. T Rex tooth. Yeah. The T R T. You know, she might have been old enough to be a T Rex. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Not so old <laughs> Lots of short arms. <laughs> I like that. T R T R T. That's got potential. Kind of T Rex tooth. Yeah. Maybe. Tops T Rex tooth. So you guys should go on the Facebook page and comment on the page with your ideas. If I choose your idea, you're good enough. Yes, Ooh. because it's been blowing up my comments with crazy stuff yeah, on lot. the video. And I am taking those into consideration as well. But it's yes. easier for me to look at it. Oh, yeah, uh, it's hard to respond to all, all those comments. but And keep yeah. it family friendly. That's yes. Yeah. It is a family show. And a family night. What's uh, Angry Jackalope said? 
Polaris Reach. Polaris Reach. There you go. Consider. Yeah. No, we're, we're just having a fun time, guys. Uh, we're happy to bring content to you folks. As long as you folks want think what we're putting out is relevant, we'll keep making the effort to come here and do this stuff. Yeah. I mean... Thank you. you you're making me nervous. <laughs> You know, I'm, we're, we're blessed, you know, getting to bump into guys like Matt Graham and we talked with Michael Hawk and just stuff like that. You know, we're just we're just average Joes like you guys out there that are stupid enough to get in front of the camera and post videos. And, uh, you know, we're just having a good time talking to these guys. No, for, clar else. for clarification, the, uh, the table for that knife was on. All of those knives were upcoming patterns. Mm -hmm. Yes. So Tops must have, what, 50 knives? New patterns coming out, something like that. Craig told me today that they'll probably have two, at least minimum two a month. Brand new tops knives, something for everyone out there. And one will be really awesome. Yes. One will be mine, or maybe two or three. You talking about the folding one? Oh yeah. <laughs> well, everybody's been asking about the tops Bob folder, and I'm not going to do the spoiler. I talked to Craig. I got him on video. It just doesn't know when it's going to come out. It's going to come out when they can perfect it, and it's going to be done right. They don't want to release something that they're going to have a crap ton of problems with. They want to make sure the steel's right, the heat treat's right, that everything's going to be functional, and they don't have a timeline yet. They're, I can respect that. As a, maker, wait until it's done. as a maker, I can tell you, you think you've got everything figured out, you run a couple off, yeah. and then... And sometimes it's not even a problem with the knife. It's just a problem with, all right, how are we going to make this efficiently? Yeah. And you're gonna, sh you're absolutely certain it's gonna come out, and then you find a little problem, and you find a little problem, and you don't want to send it out halfway. Right. Well, that's their thinking too. They don't want to do a run of a thousand, and all of a sudden now you have a thousand problems. Yeah. They want to make sure that it's a or limited run. Nine and nine, and then you have nine nine problems. That's right. <laughs> but Andy's not one of them. Because <laughs> Craig had a prototype, and I got to hold it, and I said, uh, "What's the chances of me?" Getting this, and Craig was like, uh, "No." I was like, "Okay, you can have that." Hey, we got a comment. They want to know how long if those are fully illuminated light. How long will they shine? Uh, uh, direct sunlight works best. Uh, so, thirty minutes of direct sunlight will give you about eight hours of glow. Um, one of the things I love about them is when I'm camping. Uh, you know, I'll take my pants off, get my sleeping bag, and the knife is on the belt. And the next morning when I get out before it's fully daylight, I can still see the knife glowing. And that's that's how I find my pants in the morning without having to stumble around. Yeah, I know. That sounded, cool story. That sounded better before I said it. It's easier than him around. finding his pants this morning. <laughs> <laughs> somebody's, half naked. somebody's asking me if I saw Brady Pasola from the San Diego School of Survival. I did. Multiple times. Multiple times, yes. One, uh, one time I didn't know. We met. And I didn't know because we were standing in line to go to the Article 15 uh, premiere, trailer uh, premiere. And somebody came up and started choking me out. And I was doing the count of, okay, I'm going to stay passive because it must be somebody I know. And you noticed and no, that none of us were going to help you. None of my <laughs> beer drinking buddies were intervening. So I figured it had to be somebody I knew. And it was great. Well, good thing that. And we've been texting and saying. If he wasn't so friendly, then he would have got a little bit of the. Uh, the <laughs> it was a to put just the tip of No, in. Brady's a good guy. I love Brady. Don't hurt Brady. I will not hurt Brady. I'm pretty sure Brady could hurt me more. He's a very big guy. I understand. He's a big guy, yes. But you're like Diamond, like you're small but powerful. Yeah, I'm like in a small package. And hey, for those, your stage name. And for those asking, when I get the time, I'm going to hook up with Brady and we're going to do some uh, desert survival videos that we have going on. That we're, we're working on some uh, concept things, so you, you might want to follow along with that because he has some really cool ideas coming out, and we want to get that on video and share it with you guys out there. Uh, can you buy items from Shot Show directly? Yes. You can. Some. Some. Yeah. Not not guns. Well, not I'm, like grenade launchers. Yes. Do that. Some launcher. things they were. Yeah, you get steel those. Yeah. That's not, there's a lot of security here. <laughs> Because <laughs> uh, they have, there's one section where it is all retail. You're right. And then the booths down below, some of them will sell and some of them. Yeah, you're right about that. 
mostly you gotta have money and a good you know, you can't just buy everything you want because then you be broke by the time you get to the second one. Yeah, you know, we were money. we were talking about how much money that shot show brings to the local economy. Just from the overpriced burgers. Alone. Yeah. Yeah. And don't forget the, the ten dollar beverages. What? Ten dollars for our yeah. Uh, we'll go oh, with that and shit. Yeah. The stuff you put in the agua, yeah, it was running 10, 10 bucks a, a serve. Yeah, Vegas got a little expensive this year. Mm -hmm. was, I don't know. Maybe because they're having three conventions at the same time. They have the contractor construction convention, the porn convention, and SHOT Show. And if you walk around a casino with a video camera, everybody thinks that you're going to SHOT Show. <laughs> I'm just, you know, well, and as uh, as one bartender may have mentioned to a gentleman sitting next to me, if you don't like paying these prices, go somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. it's true. It's true. But I, my daughter uh, was told that there's more people in Vegas right now that, for this week because of all these conventions than any time for the rest of the year. And that's like big sporting events that are happening. And yeah, MMA fights. fights. Yeah, it's just crazy. I heard a local guy talking that was coming to this show, and uh, he usually gets a room down here just for convenience rather than driving home. And he said this is the first time he's ever had trouble getting a room. Yeah. The hotels are so big up here. You can always get, it may not be the best room, but you can get a room, and he could not get a room this year. Somebody's asking, did we get range passes? Andy? No. Andy? No. Did we get range passes? No. The internet said that we had to be invited. I'm not that cool. And apparently there was a time for like the media to apply and there was a cutoff time that we didn't know about. So Yeah, a, a really cool experience shot show uh, mentor. We got that. Yeah, the three time shot show <laughs> guy. Well that's why I was like, this is BS because you know, last time I applied I was like, Did you know? It was. And then I get an email and it's like invite only and I'm like, Well because we wanted to go down there and should have a 50 cal or something. Well, I'm sorry. If Joe Flowers could get a pass, you should have been able to get me a pass. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Flowers, I mean, he's cool. But I'm yeah. Yeah, but well, you're he's not Joe right? Flowers cool shooting a gun. Shoot, yeah. I mean, come on. I'm shooting for you automatic. Yeah, he was posting that stuff on Instagram. That was cool. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. What else is somebody saying out there? Nice yeah. drag me out there with you. Hey, we'll do it, man. Yeah. You guys. You pay me a thousand bucks, I'll bring you with me. <laughs> so, uh, we are not at Hooters or the end. That's why we drink at the stage door. Oh, mm. Somebody gave us one yeah, down. note to self. Yeah. Stage I heard about that. Anyway. You know, that could also be a setup. That could we be. might be about to walk into the Blue Oyster Bar. Are you guys at Hooters or MGM? <laughs> uh, I cannot confirm or deny either of those. The presence of nuclear weapons at this facility. But what is that right beside my fabulous noggin? Yeah, that that's proof. That is that's the proof to the lives that uh, we're not currently. And that this is, is live, right? Hmm? This is live. So this is this yeah, is proof this is that we're we're in fact that not actually yet at here. the MGM. Somebody thinks we're at Planet Hollywood. Mm -hmm. No. Nope. Well, that's Luxor on the back. We're at an undisclosed location. If you can figure out what hotel and what room number, I'll buy you a beer. Actually, I'm gonna uh, I'll call the cops because that's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Based on the trajectory. And the <laughs> no, seriously, I'll buy you a beer. You figure it out. Don't encourage that. Yeah, Why not? It. It's something fun. We'll read in the comments later. It's stalker laws, right? Is it? Yeah. In Vegas? It's got to be. Wow. You may not have to worry about it, but this face? Yeah, yeah you're right. You do have to worry about it. No. We're all right. I have a gag reflex. I don't have to <laughs> Uh, let's see. It's not what you said in the jungle. Hey, I'm hey. saying it's my favorite planet. Ho oh, okay. You're saying it's his favorite planet uh, Hollywood. All right. Now that I could get. And the best food is at the wind. Uh, so who's not 9-11 Lex Vegas? It must be some person that works in Vegas. I like that one buffet that we were at Caesars. Yeah, that was pretty good. Like 52 bucks a person, but. What are your favorite knives so far? Jack Payne. Well, I have happened to be bunking with two knife guys, so <laughs> dogs would so, cut so answer carefully. Tops <laughs> knives. Yeah. 
You know, I don't want to wake up with a Colombian necktie. Oh, yeah, I need my stabby knife. So I'm, I'm not oh, under yeah, duress or anything. <laughs> uh, let's see. The best food is at the win. Okay. Cool hotel with the pool on the roof. Hey, we might have to run down to the wind for last dinner. We may. Uh, especially considering a Stormageddon uh, may have me trapped here for a few extra days. Yeah. So all you East Coasters that are flying out, you might wind up in Vegas a little bit longer. Baby, I promise I tried to get home. <laughs> Snow and ice. Uh, it's sorry. legit. It's yeah. legit. It says Southern Grind Knife looks amazing with wrenches. I don't know if that even That's some freaky stuff right there. Freaky naughty right there. Yeah, although I did see Southern Grind did have a, uh, does have a booth down here. Do they? Yeah. Um, there's that ground back, so. Cool. Here's what it is. Oh, the Jackalope said that's the Rhino from Southern. Ah, uh, okay. okay. See, there's so many booths. And not enough time. I mean, you could go 24 hours a day for the whole time of SHOT Show and still not see everything if you stopped at every booth. This is true. I mean, at a, at a fast walking pace, it would take you, what, two days to get Easy. just to walk past every booth. Um, my son-in-law had his pedometer on. On the first day, we were here Tuesday, we walked almost five miles just on the SHOT Show floor. Yeah, I can believe it. So, and, and I mean, that's four or five miles after that was to get. Yeah. So we were hiking around Vegas. And it was what, another five miles for you to get tickets? Oh, that one day? Yeah. Yeah. So they're asking, how was it meeting Matt Graham? I wouldn't know. <laughs> Neither would I. No one introduced me. Or no, you know, nobody took me to the crossing booth. That was like retaliation. Hey, man. Uh, that, was, that was like step one of retaliation. No, Matt Graham's really cool. Um, who you see, a lot, a lot of times you see reality stars on TV and stuff, and they're not that persona in really light. And when you see him, he, he's genuine. He's the real deal. Um, very kind, very humble. Just how, watch my, my two videos I put out. How he's on it, on the videos is how he really is. He's just a super cool dude. He's welcome at my campfire anytime. I, I respect the dude for that. He's just an honor. I'm a straight up dude. Uh, let's see. Oh, the famous person I got to speak to. Uh, I got to speak to Jesse James. Cool. Uh, he's got a, a booth this year with uh, his 45s, and he's got a new suppressor design. Uh, yeah, he's making what? 1911 aftermarket stuff, right? Yeah. Cool. Um, if it was a knife, I'd, put, I'd say it was an art knife. I don't know if art gun is fair, but I mean, some of the stuff he's doing with handles and some of the engraving he's doing is, I, mean, I, I would be afraid to shoot it. Well, you know, hey, he makes awesome custom motorcycles that only, I mean, to make the jump. Well, and he's in Texas now. Is he? Yep. So he's free to make a lot of good stuff now. Uh, hence the suppressors. And yeah, no kidding. Let's see. Did Magnum Research have their lightened desert eagle? I don't know. I didn't see it. I, I didn't hear any buzz about it. I heard there was two new Glocks coming out, but I... They don't want to talk to people like me. Uh, no. Asians? Little people. Oh, okay. Engineers? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're doing multi-million dollar deals. I mean, they they don't have time to talk. I saw yes. one. I saw somebody's got a Desert Eagle, but the I couldn't throw elbows to get to the front of the line. So I think Jack Payne's asked me, how was it talking to Andy Tran at the top speed? That guy's a tool. He oh, is. Total. It was just as good as talking to Andy Tran right now. You know how you're talking about some reality stars, or, or they they may not be like their persona, they can be really cool? Yeah. That's I, not Andy Tran. No, he, he's even more of a tool in real life than he is on air. <laughs> oh, you guys are crazy. Uh, what's the 4570 revolver? I don't know what that one is. Uh, uh, that big ass revolver. Yeah, is I heard about cannon? it. I haven't yeah. found it yet, but I heard about it. Or it crack your wrist, or like folds your wrist into your elbow. Yeah, I mean you you've seen a forty five seventy round, right? Yeah, like a buffalo. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, so it's a revolver. I can only imagine what the muzzle brake does. Although uh, we also saw a a fifty BMG uh, upper that fits a, an AR yes. lower. Yes, um, that was that was bitching. You know, I, I'm just afraid what it do to my lower. <laughs> 
The only thing hotter than that was some of the booth girls. Yeah. You know, I was pretty impressed. Uh, again, uh, absolutely coincidental. There's no connection here. Uh, but the uh, Sandpiper of California girls were, were stunning. <laughs> uh, and, of course, the Dylan girls. Uh, Dylan I Aerospace. I didn't get a chance to see any of them. You have to understand the mindset. Well, I, got, I got a calendar for you. There's like 98% high male t testosterone there at shot. So in order to get guys to come to these booths, they're throwing out all these hot girls. So the guys go, oh, I'll go over there. Wait, that's why? Well, that's what he said in the brochure. I thought they just liked me. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite tops knife? Uh, you're trying to give me... I gotta stay with these guys. I can't say what my favorite tops knife is. They'll give me a Colombian necktie. Uh, what's that? Machete, what's that machete that that uh, that flowers guy did? I think that's probably. Yeah. <laughs> I love flowers. <laughs> <laughs> what's this? I live in Canada. I just got my gun license. What gun would you recommend for my first gun? Yeah, All I want to. I want to. Yeah, no kidding. As many as you can get. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, bolt action. Just you know, keep it simple first. Yeah. They're inexpensive. I don't know what it. restrictions you have in Canada. Well, and what experience level they've got. My, it depends on what you want to use it for. Home defense, hunting. Home defense gun, 12-gauge shotgun. Hands down. Uh, hunting rifle. I mean, you're depends dealing with bears up there. Well, and depending on where they are, moose, yeah. bear. Um, I'd go with a 308 or a 30 6 if I was dealing with moose or bear. Um, and if they've just started shooting, clinking is probably the most rewarding practice. Yeah. So it's hard to beat a 22 long rifle. The ammo is cheap. It's fun to shoot. you got a lot of options. I would um, agree. You could do something in 223 because, again, the ammo is cheap. Practice with. Yep. Uh, let's see. I thought there was a Subu rifle that was a removable breech plug. I don't know about that. Uh, I've seen their booth, but I don't remember... Yeah, I gave it a flyby, and I don't remember anything yeah. that, that blew me away. I about the skeletal and uh, Leatherman. I really didn't crucify Leatherman. I don't know if you guys did because I, I didn't hear you buzz. Uh, there's a video coming. Is yes, there? there is today or yeah. or maybe tomorrow. Who shot that video? Oh. I mean, see, I wasn't invited. To I mean, who, the I mean who hey, scouted we, it out for you? We though. go into shot show together, and then we split up, and then we meet at Tops, and then. It feels like a broken marriage. It's not a broken marriage. It's just, you know, you do your thing. And do this is how marriage That's works. <laughs> Sometimes you have to be apart. You know, Andy, won the kid, Andy won the kid in the divorce. Yeah, so I, I carry you back one. <laughs> <laughs> so, oops. Hey, but I may not love you if you don't buy me a car. Yeah, no kidding, huh? Uh, the, uh, the Leatherman, uh, it, yeah. When I was in the service, I always I had a Leatherman on my head. Yeah. Especially when I was around Humvees, I was constantly fixing stuff with them. But it was never really a practical outdoors tool for me. Um, but Leatherman is starting to address that. They've got uh, they've got a new the tool. Signal. Out. Yep, the Signal, uh, which is Would geared. you buy it? I'm going to buy it. Yeah. Would you buy it? Um, because I was thinking about buying it, but I don't know if I want to drop a Benji on it. Now that I know Andy's going to buy one, I'm going to wait to see he uses it, and then I'll steal his. There you go. Good thing we live across the country. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I'm intrigued. I don't know if I'm going to buy it or if I'm going to wait till Andy reviews it and then buy it. Let's see. Any new backpacks that caught your eye? Thoughts on the new Maxpedition line or upgraded stuff from VanQuest? Uh, again, the mule pack that I talked about. You know, that's a whole system, and yeah, it apparently it caught my eye. I won't shut up about it. I talked to the boys from VanQuest. I shot a video. I'll have that coming out as soon as possible. They have a lot of new stuff. That was really cool. Excuse me. Uh, some stuff called Molly Air, and they, a process of how they do that is a little bit different than everybody else. I'll talk about it in detail in the video. Um, if I can't get it out tonight, I'll try to get it out sometime this weekend, hopefully, before I go back to my day job. You know, if, if you just cut your sleep from two hours a night to nothing, I know. you can get these videos out. I know. I'm seeing cross that right now. So I know if I stay up a little bit longer, my vision will go back. To yeah, you're just being lazy now. I know. <laughs> what do you guys think of the Super Tool 300? 
I own one. I did a review on one. I like it. It's but it's big and bulky. It's heavy. But there's a lot of stuff on that too. I only have one other than oh two. One main one, the charge TTI. I like it. S thirty B. I have the rebar. I like the rebar more than the super tool. Just because it's more compact and you get almost the same amount of tools on that one. I don't have one. I uh, I still have my mid nineteen nineties original Leatherman. Oh, you think it's a one? Yeah. Oh, see, so I mean, yeah, they were freaking bomb proof. You haven't worn that out? Uh, yeah, I tried. <laughs> Twenty five year warranty on it, and you still got a few years. Yeah. Uh, there is a specialized multi tool for the AR fifteen. Yes, there is. Yeah, and I saw a lot of aftermarket companies that had tools out there too. I didn't get a chance to stop and like touch them and stuff because I had to be somewhere on the quick. But uh, there's a lot of multi tools out there for ARs now from yeah, other manufacturers other than Leatherman. Most most of the things you need for the AR, aside from like a barrel mount wrench and a cover tube wrench, you can do with a bullet or a small like tank. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I, I don't see the point. I scrape my carbon with a used pen case. <gasps> Actually, blast you taught me that trick because I couldn't works, get carbon right? off my bolt carrier. Yeah. And uh, oh, we should tell that story real quick. Listen to Taylor Swift. Maybe yes. Garage. So, yeah, um, and, and just for the record, I've got nothing to do with this. And he came to my house. The record's awesome. A couple weeks ago on his way back home. And we went range day, just shooting, going crazy town. And uh, we were cleaning guns in my garage. And uh, had a carbon problem on the bolt carrier. And um, he did his little brass trick. And we happened to be listening to Taylor Swift uh, Shake It Off. And they got a little crazy. No, we weren't drinking alcoholic beverages or anything, but uh, I mean, you were free basing. You were free basing, yeah, the, the gun cleaning solution. But uh, well, not, we were rocking out with Taylor Swift while we were cleaning everything. our guns. If, it, if there had been a video on that, I guarantee it would have been viral because we were singing and dancing. As long as the che checks keep coming in, there won't be a video <laughs> posted. <laughs> Uh, do any of us own a SOG Power Assist EOD? I do. Do you? I have like two. I, I did the uh, online videos for SOG. That's right, you did. So they would like give me like cases. Of, I didn't do them for this year because they found something else because that was in the middle of the desert. But uh, yeah. Are you bitter? No, I'm not bitter. I don't think <laughs> to do like chasing criminals. You got Eric Sherman that's going off to work. He just wanted to say hi. Eric Sherman, shout out, buddy. No, you just got off work. Oh, you just got off work. Oh, see, I should be wearing my old people glasses. I will be back in <laughs> Washington here in my 48 hours. Foam shaving cream works miracles on carbon on your rifle. Hmm. See, I learned something new right there. That's why I love our subscribers and viewers, because we learn freaking cool stuff. Uh, what do you lube the pivots of your Leatherman and folding knives with? Century Solutions. Try try it. I use unicorn tears. Me too. I found them at the Syracuse booth right behind me, little bias. So I have them there. It's like that now. Uh, actually, you know, I probably should admit this, but I've had my Leatherman for 20 something years now. And I don't think I've ever lived it. Really? Yeah. Did you take it to the Amazon with you? Uh, I did not, but I took it to Haiti with me. And that's a high human environment. Yep. So. Yeah, that's uh, well, testament was, to their stainless I was, in Louisiana, I was in Louisiana for three years with it at Fort Polk. And it gets pretty damn humid down there, too. Yeah. So that's a testament to their, their stainless. Good job. Yeah. Somebody uses WD-40. WD-40 works at Yeah. And it was made in San Diego. My town. San Diego. That's where it originated at. Redneck Engineering Chart. If it, does it move? Yes or no? That's right. If it does move and you don't want it to, duct tape. Yes. If it doesn't move and you want it to, WD-40. Amen. See right there. You you give us a, some little uh, life hacks, we give them right back. Mm -hmm. Fluoridated grease is excellent. Isn't that like a Flor fluorinated? Oh, fluorinated. That, that's <laughs> See, like, I'm put my glass is that than flowers? <laughs> I don't know. I was thinking that was Crest toothpaste. Yeah. That's good stuff. Uh, use a special idea. type of nano grease. So we're getting into a Leatherman pivot grease. I just show. See how this just goes crazy. How do we go from like 
We went to SHOT Show to Knives. Oh, that's to, because of the porn show. Yeah, the porn convention to now moving a Leatherman. Oh, I see a direct line there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Uh, what? We have one more day at SHOT. I'm here a half day. I think Andy's here a full day. Are you going to be here a full day? Uh, I am. My flight leaves at uh, midnight tomorrow. Do you guys have anything that you'd like to see? I don't know about talk to because a lot of people are probably packing up and leaving shot. But uh, if there's stuff that you'd like to see, if it's humanly possible and I have the time, I'll do my best to try to do it and get it on video for you folks. I would like to see uh, Andy walk shirtless through uh, shot show. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is how crazy we're just sleep deprivation crazy guys. It's just nuts. it's been nuts. We've been laughing and giggling. You put stuff out there. You can't be surprised when I go weird. Yeah. Magnum research, please. Uh, you, you're talking the knives or the no? We no, were, no, that's that's Eagle. Oh, the that's Eagle. Eagle. Okay, we'll try. Uh, you know, we'll test out that app. We'll see how it works. We'll see if we can find that booth tomorrow. Okay, I'll, we'll I'll do show that. you how it works. Please, I need to be schooled on that because when I first tried it, it was a no-go. You just got to find a 15-year-old kid and I'll show you how your smartphone works. Good night, Jens. Getting an early start back to Utah. Jackalope, you rock, bro. It was a pleasure meeting you. And pleasure thank you for you. the patch, dude. That patch rocked. Good luck, Prosper. Cool. Well, it's been an hour. You got to edit. I got to go to sleep. Yeah, man. Says he wants to see the luggage convoy with Andy on a 50 cal. No, man. <laughs> Mini gun, a gambling gun. No, we want that AR platform 50 cal. That's badass. No, yeah. the Barrett 50 cal, the one that was with the gold and the black one. You know what's that one? At the Barrett booth. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's an A. Oh, actually, no, we need to find that AUG uh, 50 caliber Gatling gun. Oh, somebody's asking me did the Tops Tex Creek folder fall off the face of the earth? No, it did not. I talked to Craig today about it. They want to make sure that the Bob folder is perfect before they do the Tex Creek folder. And so, I'm sure it'll be faster for the Tex Creek using technology from the Bob transfer. Correct. I can't speak for tops, but that was the gist of what we heard today. Uh, what EDC are you carrying? Oh, we could go in. Good. I even EDC'd Matt Graham, and he was carrying Spiderco. Endura 4, but I bought a Topps Millspire today. Millspire. Millspire, see? I get schooled, I'm tired. It's okay. I had one, I lost it. It's an awesome knife. I've got the three finger the, uh, EDC from Dogwood. Three, three fingers? Yeah. So nothing fingers. like carrying an EDC that you made yourself. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Where the hooker's <laughs> at? I don't know. De there's definitely not a dead one in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, somebody wants to see a 1911 Kimber. There's a lot of those out there. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I'm not going to do a video on 1911 or a 15 unless it's super. Somebody's asking who's the big spoon. That depends on who wins the coin toss. I can't answer that question right now. Yeah, we don't know yet. Uh, neither of you know until in the morning. <laughs> 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 yeah, no kidding. All right, you guys want to shut her down? We got to edit. We have to edit some video. We got to get ready for tomorrow. There's a lot of stuff going on. We thank you guys so much for, on short notice, coming in, hanging with us, getting cray. And, uh, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. This is a good guy. Get your ass over on his Facebook page. Freaking subscribe. Check out his freaking. Uh, you you have a YouTube channel? Uh, kind of. Somebody's got to so teach me something no. about the... Uh, we'll get him a YouTube yeah. channel. We'll get his ass out in front of the camera and talking to you. Uh, and nice to be his on. webpage. And uh, Arizona Custom Knives uh, and um, Edgeworks. Both carry my... Uh, those are both distributors. There you me. go. Um, check out the page. Uh, check out, especially Arizona. I think they've got two or three yeah. left. If you have any questions about his stuff, message him on Facebook. I'm, this uh, guy knows his shit about freaking metal, dude. You guys... You guys I, I respect, we sat for hours. I could have sat there 10, 12 hours having beers talking about steel. I was just picking his brain. He was just rattling stuff off left and right. I, unfortunately, awesome. the more you drank, the smarter I seemed. It's true. <laughs> we were talking about Einstein level here. 
I had that much to drink. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? Inner, keep it up. Love the channel. Thank you. All right, man. Hey, we appreciate it. All right. I'm going to go sleep. Snap for the strippers. I don't uh, have the power of him, Bass. Yeah, that's Matt Bass. No. I don't have the power of him. I would do it one more time, but I'm afraid Andy will show up. Andy will be the Speedos. <laughs> Banana hand. Ah, that didn't work. We tried. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for sharing it with me. Thank you for not having to share a bed with you. Thank you, dear Lord. Hopefully I'll make it through this to see another day. You're just hoping you get the, the little spin. I'm telling you. I'm hoping I win the coin toss, dude. I'm telling you. But we you, won't know till morning. If you just quit showering, he'll leave you alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear Lord. Okay. <laughs> this, this one's done. Thanks, guys. Peace out, folks. <laughs>